Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we're looking at the 6th grade concept of equations for the area of a trapezoid, specifically how we can represent it with many different equations, and we will do it in 5 minutes or less. So if you are a 6th grader in the wonderful state of Texas, this is the equation that you will see on the 6th grade star reference materials. Now, let's take a look at this example problem. So we have a trapezoid over here, and you see our equation is going to start with a equals, then it's going to have one half, and let's take a look at this b sub 1 and b sub 2. That's just how we call the little 1 and the little 2, we say sub 1 or sub 2. All this means is that a trapezoid is always going to have two bases, and they're going to be different sizes. So we're going to take one base, we're going to take two bases, and we're going to add them. It doesn't really matter which one is which, because at the end of the day, you're going to add them both, and then we're going to take our height. Now, our height in this case is not the y simply because it is a diagonal line. A height always has to be perpendicular to the bases, has to be straight up and down. You see you got your right angles right here, which means in this case, we don't really know what our height is, it's just x. So all we can do here is we can say a equals 1 half. Let's go ahead and collapse this into 6 plus 10. So that's going to be 16, and we're going to replace our h with x. If we want to, we can go ahead and take our 1 half, multiply that by 16, that's going to get 8. And so the closest we can get is a equals 8x. But did you know that there are other ways to write the area of a trapezoid? I don't want you to get confused if you see the answer in a different way. Another way to write the area of a trapezoid is going to be like this. a equals b sub 1 plus b sub 2. Divide that by 2 and then you multiply that by h. So really all we did is we take this 1 half, and we divide the b sub 1 and b sub 2, we divide that sum by 2, because multiplying by half is the exact same thing as dividing by 2. So let's see what happens if we put these numbers in, see if it comes up with the same thing. So our b sub 1 and b sub 2, that's going to be 6, and that's going to be 10. In this case, we're dividing it by 2, and we're going to multiply that by h. We don't really need the parentheses here. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. We're going to take our 6 plus 10, that's 16. Divide that by 2, and that's h. And so guess what we're going to get? 16 divided by 2 is 8, and we know that our h is actually x, so it looks like we get the exact same thing. There is another way for you to write the area of a trapezoid. You can do this. You can take a equals b sub 1 divided by 2 plus b sub 2 divided by 2 and then multiply all of that by h. Let's see if it works. So we're going to take our b sub 1. Let's just go ahead and call that b sub 1. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to call that 6 cut in half. We're going to call this b sub 2. So we're going to say that's 10 cut in half, or divided by 2, and we're going to get our h here. Well, let's see what we have. We've got 6 divided by 2, that is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. h, in this case, all we know is x, so a equals 8x. So there are three different ways that you can write the equation for the area of a trapezoid, and sometimes you'll see the answer in any of these three ways. Now it's time for you to practice. We have a new trapezoid in the top right hand corner. Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can find the area of that trapezoid, and as a bonus, see if you can write the equation in more than one way. Hopefully you had a chance to solve this equation yourself. I've got it set up three different ways here. So your base sub 1 and your base sub 2, that's going to be your 6 and your 8. So we're going to take 1 half, we're going to add those together, that's 14 times 4, so 1 half times 14 is 7, times 4 looks like it's 28. Over here, we went ahead and added the 14 first and then divided by 2, so we've got 14 divided by 2 times 4, that is 7 times 4, also 28. In this last case, we separated it out using the distributive property. We have 6 divided by 2, that's 3. We have 8 divided by 2, that's 4, add those together times by 4, you get 7, times 4, 28.